For those of you who are listening online, because I did introduce myself, or those of you who have just arrived, uh, I'm Kath Nolan and this is Fundamentals of Contract Law. Um, we're about to spend 12 awesome weeks together. Um, you don't have to tell me, but I'm pretty sure that most of you are thinking, how the hell am I going to get through this one? It sounds really boring. I'm lucky to have one of the subjects with the lowest expectations and it's actually one of the most interesting subjects. Um, so, but before we start, I just want to take a moment to ground ourselves and to acknowledge that we are embarking on this journey together on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. RMIT has recently changed its acknowledgement of country to talk about the language groups. Um, and as I say this out loud, I think really that's something I probably should have paid some attention to today. Um, I want to pay my respects to the elders past and present who brought us to this place and particularly to the emerging leaders both in this room and elsewhere. Um, and I think it's important to start this process with what is becoming a real acknowledgement of embarking on a serious and worthwhile endeavour. Um, and to remember that this country has come from a particular place over a very short period of time. And the kinds of rules and laws that we will be talking here will feel ancient. But it's kind of, for me, refreshing to remember that they come after a tradition that has continued and is more ancient still. And maybe that might help you when you are reading yet another case that was written more than 200 years ago. Um, so, first things first. Um, I want to spend probably up to the break, realistically, just going through some admin -y type things, talking about why we're doing it and how we're learning this, uh, and how we're going to approach these classes. Hopefully, very shortly, some air con will be on in this room. For those of you listening at home, we are sweltering in what is a completely ridiculous room for our purposes, but you know we're going to be fine. So one of the things I'm really excited about for this semester is um, up until now, we have had to teach in three hour blocks. Uh, and that actually can be quite, it's just overwhelming for everybody, <coughs> three hours of everything in one go. So, and particularly as I like to teach this class on the basis that I know many of you will not come to class. Uh, that you've got other things that you need to do and other priorities in your life. You know, this is a master's degree. You are postgraduate students. Most of you will be working um, and that's one of the things that probably attracted you to this course because the classes would be at night. Um, many of you will have kids. Those of you who have kids will know that there is no such thing as a normal week. You can put a timetable up on the fridge that says you're going swimming on Tuesdays and there's a lecture on Monday nights, but every week there'll be something that throws all of that out. Um, if you are in this class, I'm very happy if you want to call me and talk to me about anything, you don't need to do that to apologise for not turning up to class. We will always have the recording. So the OUA group, as far as I'm concerned, if it works for you to come to class, you are more than welcome. Um, and if it doesn't work for you to come to class while you're a face-to-face -face student, that's fine too. There will be recordings of all of the lecture materials available for both cohorts. Um, a lot. This is really true blended online and face-to-face -face learning, a combination of the two. We will also have a tutorial um, online every either Wednesday or Sunday nights. We're going to work out what's going to suit you. I'm hoping it's Sunday nights because I'd like to close off the week uh, for you to have your, we do a class at the beginning, we then talk about at the end of the week the stuff that challenged you, the stuff that you had problems with. The tutorials, I've run them for a few years now so it's not new. Um, uh, I don't, up until now I didn't really record them. I sort of worked on the basis if people were showing up for a class to ask their questions and we were doing it face to face. Unless there were five or more of them, I never recorded it because I thought it actually inhibited 
the quality of the questioning or people sort of wanting to show, actually, I have this particular issue I'm concerned about. Um, but because we're out now blending it into the way that this course is delivered, you will find that you, um, those are all recorded too. So if I will pick the most popular time based on some feedback from everybody and we'll do one of those little doodle surveys. I don't even have to know who voted for what. None of your classmates do. All we will know is what are the most popular times that I'm offering. Uh, and then we will run that class, which will be recorded. Um, but the other thing that you'll find, and those of you who've wandered through uh, the Canvas shell or the learning management system or whatever you want to call it, uh, will see that I've got a lot of pre-recorded classes too. Because the way I see it, the passive stuff, where it's just me talking and you listening, you can do that in your own time. You can put me on chipmunk speed and just <laughs> go through it. I purposefully put them up via YouTube, which does a reasonable go at creating closed captions. So you can put me on chipmunk speed and work out what you want to do. Some people will want to listen to it three times. Of course you would, why wouldn't you? Uh, and some of you won't. You'll also find there, because it's just all open, now, I've been teaching this for a little while, you'll find that there's a channel there and if you just if you didn't like how I explained it one week, you can go and find many, many other weeks of me explaining the same topic and you <laughs> might, it might help you when you do that. Uh, and so the aim, the aim is that the passive stuff, the reading, the lecture stuff, a lot of that is going to be done on your own time with the online resources. We're going to stay in track week to week to the extent that we can, and that we're going to come into this room, which is why I'm so disappointed with this room, to be quite frank. Um, we'll come into this room to do some activities, to have some conversations and to stretch and challenge the learning. Now, I know there are people who hate that. <laughs> when I was at school, I hated it. Like, you know, actually it means you have to be prepared, or if you're not prepared, people know you're not prepared. Um, it's challenging, I get that. Also, it means particularly for introverted thinkers, so the people who like to be really confident that they have the right answer before they say anything, talking to your peers about that stuff can be challenging. Um, I really hope that you trust, and I get it, you haven't met me, why would you trust me? Or you've met me. Am I trustworthy? No, he doesn't trust me. Damn it. See, I haven't even got any data to support it. That you would think, actually, I've thought about this before. I'm aware of those kind of issues and give it a go because there are lots of different ways to participate. So, all these slides will be made available to you. My preferred way of doing this is to make them available to you after the class. Uh, um, I know that you will fill in that form that says I suck as a teacher if I do that, doesn't matter what else I do if I don't give you the slides in advance. So all the slides are in there in Canvas somewhere, but they might be last semester slides. Um, and I will replace them with this semester's slides as soon as I can because, like many of you, I do my preparation for class pretty much just before I come or on that Monday on the day. So I run through it again and I can't help myself. I will always tweak something. Uh, even though there are not a lot of changes in this area of the law, um, I will always tweak something because I reckon it's more interesting for you if I'm interested. It's a bit like it's the secret of writing a good essay. Be interested in the topic because you'll write in a way that's interesting. Um, so that is how to contact me. Phone number or email? Either way, I'm on WhatsApp. I travel a lot. In fact, I am heading uh, tomorrow, no, the next day to Vietnam, and I will not be back until we see each other again in about two weeks. Uh, I'm working over there with the business school. Um, so WhatsApp is good if you want to send me a text or something because I'll take my SIM out and you probably won't find me. So um, I would suggest think about how urgent your question is and how high your level of concern about it is. If, it, if you are concerned about it, send me a text message or a WhatsApp, okay? And I will either, I will be very quick to tell you how quickly I can respond. Um, I, don't, I don't look at texts in meetings. I don't pick up the phone in meetings. If you call me, I will put your name into my phone so I know who you are and I will not call you back if you do not leave a message with your name and telling me that you are in a class because it just gets overwhelming for me. But I will call you back if you've left, if I know who you are already or if you have uh, left me a message 
telling me what your name is. Often it is quicker for us to have a five minute chat about a problem or an issue or where to find something than it is for me to do uh, you know, backwards and forwards on the email. So don't be shy about that. Work on the basis that it's my decision whether I'm going to respond to you or not and I will do my best to respond to you within 48 hours regardless of whatever message or way you try to contact me. Um, but if, you're, if I get a sense that you're anxious or nervous about it, I will get back to you as quickly as I can. I just need to know it's you and ideally what it's about. Um, because, I should introduce myself a bit, um, I also teach in the business school, which is where Joel and I met. Um, I travel a bit. Um, I am, I've got 30, no, I'm going to say more than 25 years as a practicing lawyer. I still practice. Uh, I am not like many of the other lecturers that you have here in the sense that I am not, a, I don't call myself an academic and I am not a traditional academic. I am, I, I've adopted the term pracademic. Uh, so technically I am an academic, I am qualified to teach master's level, up to a master's level. Um, but I do not have a PhD. I have not done deep research in any area of the law. Uh, what I have done is been a transactional commercial lawyer and an entrepreneur for more than 25 years. I started my career, I was admitted in 1989, so you can do the maths, more than 25 years is a good number. I was admitted in 1989 and I started off in the big firms. I actually started doing resources and infrastructure stuff. I was never happy in the resources environment. I was actually did electricity, but still, yeah, anyway, was not, didn't actually accord particularly well with me. I am, actually you are, this is the moment you can write it down. You have actually just met the daggiest, geekiest person that you're ever going to meet. Like I have been a software nerd since the beginning of time. Uh, yes, I did play Dungeons and Dragons and I enjoyed it. And no, it's not as easy to meet boys doing that as you would think. <laughs> um, so I have spent my life in sort of swatch, switched into a technology area basically. So I've been a capital finance technology lawyer for a really long time which basically means I have bought stuff and sold stuff and put money into projects. Well lawyers because we've got big egos we say we do it we don't. We actually write the contracts that do that uh, and we'll talk about that. So I've been writing, negotiating, responding to drafting contracts as a transaction maker for a very long time. Uh, and in the meantime, I've also done a whole lot of things. So I also teach a subject called design thinking and another one called managing technology and innovation or managing technology and innovation strategy. Can, um, can the both of them uh, in the MBA cohort here. Uh, I do some consulting. I still practice as a lawyer, but I'm kind of a technical lawyer these days. I have my own practicing certificate, but other than the odd bit of pro bono work, uh, most of my legal work is as a specialist lawyer for other law firms. So I come in to do particular things that nobody else gets is interesting because <laughs> the stuff I think is interesting is not necessarily the stuff other people do. Um, so again, uh, I will approach this subject very much as a practitioner. Um, so hopefully, for those of you who really love the academic bent, um, who really like to unpick it, like this is probably your best week. Those of you who love the reading this week are probably not going to enjoy the course as much as those of you who hated it or didn't do it. Um, because this week is the week where we really do the kind of academic, airy, fairy stuff and then what I'll be doing is really l helping you navigate what, a co what contract laws are, how we recognise a contract in, a, in the wild and in the Australian legal landscape. Uh, and today was really about thinking why we even have contract laws at all and, and what that means. Um, I, in a contract sense, I call myself a lover as opposed to a fighter. Many of the other pracademic lawyers that will teach you in your JD will be barristers. So they are basically, they're the fighters, right? That's what they do. Um, and one of the things you will see very quickly is the way that we learn. The, who, who just did intro over the last weekend? 
most of you by the looks of things here um, and a couple of you then the rest of you probably did it six months ago and did torts or crim or something as well yeah a couple of shaking heads um, is there anybody who hasn't done intro and this is their first ever class or hasn't started welcome good for you talk to somebody about intro and make sure you get yourself sorted as to where that is because some of the research stuff will be really important that goes for you guys at home as well um, so, let, where was my train of thought here? One of the things that you will realise very quickly, studying across all of these subjects, is we learn how to be lawyers, both what the law is, and in particular in a contract sense about how to draft a contract or what to put into a contract, by looking at cases. Now, ideally, um, ideally when we look at a case, just think about where that comes from. Um, for those of you who've done intro or getting there, you will realise already that there's a hierarchy of case law. You know, not all of these things are the same as the others. There are some cases that are meatier, weightier, carry more precedent than others. And basically, for your case, your dispute to get to the High Court, think about what that means. So if we look at a contract case, particularly a recent contract case, we're basically looking at a situation where there was an agreement, whether that was a real contract or not, between two people, where the relationship or the agreement broke down to the point where one of them was prepared to sue the other and the other one was not willing to give in, was going to fight. So we're talking about pretty bad commercial relationship, right? Or family relationship or whatever it happens to be. Then goes through the court of first instance then there has to be a point to appeal and then we truck our way up to the High Court and if we're lucky we get the full bench. Or perhaps in the olden days we even went on to the Privy Council. Quite frankly, and at risk of you already complaining about me, I'm going to use a technical legal expression here, your relationship or your agreement has to be pretty fucked to get that far. <laughs> right? So. Basically, I'm just going to tell you right from the very beginning, learning about how to write or put a contract together by reading the cases is like deciding how to be a really great parent by only talking to kids who've been through foster homes or only talking to married, divorced people. It gives you an insight about what not to do, but it only gives you a really small part of the picture. So, two lots of contract law. This one, fundamentals that I teach, and the other one is advanced. They're terrible names. This is how to make a contract. The other subject is how to terminate a contract. Okay, so that one will be taught by a barrister who may have completely opposite views to me about how this works. But that underlies my philosophy. So really, I want you to understand my philosophy of how I'm gonna teach this as part of my introduction to you. By the way, no such thing as a stupid question. Feel free to ask them as you go at any point, wave your hand around or just yell out. I will repeat the questions because I am recording, I am wired for sound, which also means if you come to talk to me during the break and I don't just pass out because this is exhausting. Um, and you want to tell me something personal, please do I love the goss. Um, you might want to give me some sign like, is the recording off or something like that if you don't want to be recorded. Um, I usually edit out the breaks, but anything. If you don't want your voice to be recorded, um, you really need to make that very clear and you will probably need to share your questions another way other than in the discussion here. Um, personally, I think I need to warn you because that's only fair, but I think that would be disappointing because you're part of a larger class. And there will be times when you can't come and you'll be listening, and if the person with a really good question just held back, and let's face it, there won't be many people with better questions than your question because all of you are the smartest person in the room or you have been for a very long time, right? So, um, you know, there'll be good questions, so ask them. Questions, concerns, frustrations, compliments, anything now? Do you like my clicker? I'm really pleased with the ability to do this, by the way. Just saying, I invest. 
So the more actively you engage, the better you will learn. There is research that goes back to a very long time. You have seen this before. There is nothing new. Um, so Dewey, famous for the Dewey Decimal System, which some of you might have heard of. Uh, nobody here reads actual physical books anymore. I hope. We like trees. Um, basically did a lot of research around how education works, and this has not been debunked. Think about it yourself. The more actively you engage with something, the more likely you are to learn. And in particular, if you look at these stats, so we're basically looking here at, like if you just sit there and do nothing, it's likely that 5% of what I say will be retained. Um, hopefully more because I've also some interesting work by a guy called John Medina which somebody, some of you will have come across, brain scientists, uh, kind of reminds me to um, make a joke every now and then because apparently most of us only have about a nine minute attention span before our wire and minds kind of wander and there are kind of two things apparently we can do for that. One is like create some sort of shock for you or punch you. I'm not allowed to punch you and basically making you laugh is a consequence for um, or, or, or is you know a way of shocking your system. Uh, so for those of you who don't like my sense of humour this is you probably won't learn anything um, other than to complain about my sense of humour. So, and which leads me to say that as I'll be doing all of the talking and the activity, I basically get 90% of what's going on here and um, I'll retain more than you will. Um, so, admin expectations. Today, and uh, today is not a good day, clearly. Actually, is anybody else feeling like it might be just slightly improving? Or is that just wishful thinking? I feel like the temperature is slightly improving. Okay. Um, we're going to start and finish on time. So our start time is 6.30 at night. And we are going to finish by about 8.30. Now, it's timetable for 8.30 to 9.30. But that additional hour will be the online shoot. few reasons for that. Firstly, it's just we think it's better pedagogy, it's a better way of teaching. Secondly, none of us want to be sitting, waiting at the station for hours. 9.30 at night is a ridiculous time to end and we want to make sure that everybody is safe and safety means physical safety as well as your actual health because you have jobs and 9.30 at night with your mind swimming from a lecture and then you're home at 10.30, 11.30 at night trying to write up whatever your notes were and I would suggest that you do that. It's not good for you and jury is out as to whether um, studying law or practicing law makes people mentally unhealthy or whether the mentally unhealthy people come to us. I don't know which it is. I have my views, but you know, I like to be open-minded. But actually it's something that the profession is taking very, very seriously, is mental health is a particularly big issue. And I, I would be surprised if it wasn't discussed in the intro weekend. It is something that you really need to look out for. One, one person, one law student's attention to detail is another person's OCD. One lawyer's ability to think through a myriad of consequences is a, another person's catastrophizing. So often the things that are indicators of a mental unwellness are actually the things that we seek out to be good at as lawyers. So it is really important to make sure you get your sleep, that you have a laugh, that you remember, even Kath could do it, so you'll be fine uh, and, and work from there. Um, you're going to ask questions as we go. I'm going to ask you to the extent that you can, for those of you who are face to face, if you can leave me alone when I'm setting up. I know I make this look easy, but I am petrified with nerves before I get in front of any of you. I like to think that's because I care. Um, and I also have all this faffing around that I do to get the recordings working and making sure that I don't forget anything and all the rest of it. So I know often that's the most convenient time for you to ask me questions about last week's reading or what your career progression should be or what you think you sh I should name your firstborn, which is a question you should ask me, by the way, because I have great names in mind. Um, but just before class is not the time you're going to get my full attention. Similarly, during the break, I often just need a little time to recharge. So if I am shushing you away, it's again because I'm looking after my mental wellness. 
Um, we're all going to participate, but I get it that participating is your participating. And, and I, I will not enter into any judgment about, well, we did that, but so-and-so wasn't prepared. You don't know whether so-and-so is prepared or not. You just know that they didn't say anything or make a contribution in a discussion. Um, and in fact, probably all you know is that they didn't make a contribution that you thought was valuable. Okay, so we don't judge, we participate. That's up to you. You know what you're doing and what you're not doing. Um, face to face, speak up when you've got questions. Make sure I can hear you, particularly in this big cavernous room. I'm just assuming you can hear me because I only have an outdoor voice. Um, but if I, I, you know, I'm just going to gesture because the recordings are boring enough as it is without every second word being, could you speak up? Could you speak up? Uh, and secondly, if I'm not sure that you can be heard, I will probably repeat the question. And that could possibly mean that I'm not clear on hearing you, which might mean that you need to say, no, that's not what I meant. Okay, so be, uh, uh, be clear about that. If you are an online student, Participating could mean making a lot more use of the discussion boards, finding a time. Do any of you like, you know, do the Netflix thing or whatever with somebody in another city where you just watch a movie at the same time and then like chat about it? Yeah, you do. Ace, I do that. I don't. I want to feel normal. Um, it's actually a really good way to do these lectures. People have done it in the past. I would never have thought about it, but they've actually just made a quote unquote study group um, where they can just they just sort of watch it at the same time. Once they tweet it in real time, that was kind of embarrassing. But um, yeah, um, but you can talk to each other as you go or you could just agree to both listen to a lecture or do something and then talk by a certain time. Again, that's a way for you to participate. Um, you're going to do the reading because I cannot do that for you. I've done it. I don't want to do it again. Um, I will synthesise some of the materials for you, but I'm going to assume that you have done the reading each time. When I say you will do the reading, I also know that there are times that you will not. Don't let that stop you from coming to class or getting on with doing things. Um, there is, um, the reading is in textbooks. Actually, I'll show you where the textbooks are later and I will have a bit of a chat about that. But it's largely available in textbooks. They are available online and in the library. Um, but it'll just be a time thing and sometimes it'll be just in the choice between reading it and actually getting the only eight hours of sleep you're going to have or the only time that you can actually have a meaningful conversation with the person that you love or walk your dog or whatever it is. Completely get that. But if you let that mean that you don't come to class and you get behind and then you're only going to be more and more and more behind because this will be, it will feel when you're working full time like there is somebody standing with a wet hose in your face just blasting at it and you're just trying to catch as many droplets as you can. <laughs> so get, I get that but try and do the reading kind to yourself if you don't do it. I'm not letting you off. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying don't let it stop you when you don't because all of you will have some time when you don't do as much as you wish you did. Like I said before, I will get back to you within 48 hours. If I am sensing the stress and I can do it, I will get back to you quicker. Uh, phones. Um, in my message, which I need to apologise for, I've got fat fingers. I sent somebody the room number and then explained where it was in a text message. Then I copied that into the message and I said it was in... I gave you the right room number and then said it was on level two, which is clearly not. So, yeah, this is why you need to talk to me sometimes. Um, I did say in the message, if you can bring a phone or a computer or something connects to the internet, that's good for some of the activities that we will do. Um, but on the whole, can you put them into silent mode? I get it, if your babysitter calls or you win the lottery or you phone a friend for Eddie Maguire or whatever it is, you have to do that. But if you think that's going to happen to you, sit on an aisle and walk out quietly because the rest of us do not want to know. Computers, if you must. Again, check out John Medina. He will explain to you with neuroscience, so it must be true, um, that the muscle memory piece of handwriting, you are more likely to retain information than if you don't. But some of you will feel much more comfortable having your system. You will also feel more comfortable hiding behind your computer. That is fine if you must do that. But if you must do that, if you are doing 
anything other than taking notes, I want you to sit in the back row. We, the rest of us are not interested in your Facebook page. Well, actually, that's not true. We are. It distracts us. Okay, we can't help it. It's been built that way. So Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, porn, gambling, I don't care what it is, back row, okay? <laughs> Not that we're judging. Not that we're judging. Um, yeah, I said this before, you're gonna get the slides. Anything else? Okay, you've been in a class with me before. This is pretty much my standard list. What do I need to add, take away from this? Don't judge me. Don't judge me. I love that. Um, and don't judge each other, okay? Look around the room, actually, because these are the people that are going to be part of your future. Particularly, you know, some of, many of you will choose to go into the profession. Others of you will be in government. You will take whatever your job is now in whatever and use these skills. So the person sitting watching porn could, in fact, be your client. Uh, in the future. They could in fact be a High Court judge. You will have that story, you know. So actually these are the things that we, you know, these are your people. So again, give a minute. That's the other thing is, I did ask some people here at the beginning, try and talk to somebody that you haven't spoken to before. Traditionally, when we don't know people, we, well not traditionally, our brains are wired to go and sit near somebody who looks like us like or sit near somebody who's familiar to us. Again, I can give you lots of research that shows that's great, they probably, people who look like us are more likely to think like us or have similar experiences to us or like the same music as us, that's awesome. Um, but actually looking in a more diverse sense, people who think differently from us help us understand. So again, talk to people that you don't know. Um, I'm on Twitter when I tweet things that uh, might be relevant to this class, I use the hashtag RMITFCL. Um, I tweet a reasonable amount. Um, if that's of interest to you, I am more than happy for you to tweet your love or disgust with me to the world. Um, questions, concerns, frustrations? Okay, this is... 6.35, not 5.35. As you can see, I'm better with my voice than I am with my proofreading. Um, 6.35 till about 6.50. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think we'll go for sort of basically a bit under an hour to start off with and then we'll have another um, 35 minutes or a bit more than an hour and then a bit less than an hour uh, uh, to keep going. So something's gone completely wrong there in my head. <laughs> okay, so I want to just like ignore that slide entirely. You can tell I've done, that was a three hours. What I want to do is go for about 50 minutes. I want to stop for about 10 minutes and then I want to go like clappers until we end. Does that make sense? And we're coming up to 50 minutes already because I started late. So that's why I said we'd have a lot of this sort of stuff. So a couple of things here that I'm going to race through fairly quickly. You can have a look at them. Some advice to get started. Plan your semester. You do not have the assignments yet. You do not have the questions. Some of you are going to be anxious about that. Just relax. Okay? You can text me as much as you like. I'll just say, relax. It's coming. The reason that I don't give you the problem up front is because we're going to go through a whole lot of content over the next couple of weeks. Um, and if you've got the question, you will only be interested in the things that are on the test and then there is a really high chance that the first thing that you ever do with a contract when you're an employed solicitor will be one of the other things that I spoke about in those first two weeks when you weren't interested. So I give you the question as late as I possibly can get away with so you pay attention. Um, there is a massive sort of timetable there. They make us like put this timetable, it's really hard to do putting it into Canvas even though the syllabus area of Canvas actually shows you where it is anyway. Um, if there is a difference between that and the syllabus, the syllabus will be right. The um, actual assignment itself will be right. They sort of make us do this manual thing and given that I've already had two typos in less than an hour, I'm thinking you can see how where that's coming from. Manual is not good with me. Uh, one of the things I would strongly recommend that you think about doing is looking at this calendar piece. It looks a bit like that. 
in Canvas. Uh, you can actually take a little, it's got a little iCal thing and you can actually put it into your Outlook diary or whatever so that you can see the assignments are coming up. I have manually put in when all of our classes are so they're already sitting in your diary so you can't accidentally plan your hen's night for the night of the class and not invite me. Um, so that's there already. That's the same for the OUA. So OUA know when these classes are. Your expectation in OUA and for the rest of you is that the recordings will arrive 48 hours later, give or take. Sometimes give, sometimes take. Um, in relation to that, I upload for the OUA students first and then I upload for the face-to-face -face one. So if you're talking to your mate who's got them and they're in OUA and you haven't got yours yet, Sorry, but they will be there the same day. I don't think I've ever been more than a couple of hours different with them. You never know. Um, I've already told you a bit about me. Um, I want to just practice using some tech now. So what I would like you to do is take the device, phone or otherwise, that allows you to access the internet. Um, for those of you who are at home, just um, write this down because it won't go I um, just want you to spend a um, second, this is as much as anything as practicing using the tech, pollev.com slash Nolan Legal. Tell us why you're studying law. It's anonymous, so it doesn't matter. And they will arrive on the screen as we do that. My guess is, because there's a lot of you in here, it'll probably refuse to take your answer if you are the 41st or later participant. But at the moment, I don't, is it blocked or anything stupid like that? Or? <laughs> Hate it when it does this. It's, okay, forget that. Why is it? Let's just go to the question that it's asking you because that is annoying and I'll come to We'll come to that in a minute and we'll go back. So is that it? Is that the one? Oh, has it come up now? <sighs> okay, that's, now that one will come up because I wrecked it. <laughs> All right, to make bank. Hey, it worked for me. I drive a fancy car and I get to teach for a living. Um, Human rights came to the right place for that, absolutely. So while you're doing that, I'll tell you why I studied law. I studied law because a nun told me to. I was going to be a journalist and um, anyway, it's a long story and I could tell that that was not going to work for me and I returned back to my nice Catholic school in the Burbs what am I going to do? And I'm picking out the list for university. Nobody in my ha family had ever been to university before. The only thing that I knew that you needed a university degree to do was uh, teaching. So I was going to do teaching and this nun at my school said, no, you, you can't do that, that's stupid. Crossed it out and put in law. She let me choose which university. Um, but other than that, that's what I did. And it's actually worked really well. Why do I tell you this? Because you guys are older than I was when I made that choice. I did an LLB. Um, I only did an LLB and I did it exactly for that first, the first one that came up to make bank. I wanted to have a good job, a secure job, a job that was going to give me some sort of prestige, I guess. Um, in fact, it's given me way, way more than that. I've met some really, <laughs> really interesting people. Um, I've met some clever people, I've met some stupid people, I've met, I've been able to travel the world, I've got involved in so many interesting things. Um, and I think though every now and then it's good for you guys to come back and think, well, who you are and who this group is. Argumentative, so we've got some fighters in the room, a couple of them by the looks of things, um, it always moves. Um, stop being bullied by staff. Maybe you need to do an MBA, actually. But anyway, um, I think it's, um, it's a good thing. Interesting, most areas of law and how the law and society interact. So that's the kind of stuff we're talking about today. Um, sorry, 
Last thing before we keep going. So that's the kind of tech we're going to be using. We're going to use that one and we're going to use Kahoot, which a few of you have come across before. Um, we'll use it, do a couple of Kahoots today. Um, week five, you are going to have an assignment. Uh, you are going to be writing a memo to, uh, to, his name's gone out of my head, Dennis from the castle. Remember him? Yeah, Dennis Denudo. You know, the vibe, that sort of thing. Um, so the first thing you'll do is very authentic to how young lawyers work. You will be providing your boss with a memorandum of advice, a memorandum about what the law is. I always pick Dennis. We always work for Dennis. The reason for that is he reminds me a bit of my first job, um, my first boss, where my first boss would just delegate everything to me and just throw me in the deep end. And so I knew I had to be super careful to get it right that I wasn't going to get. Some people had really nice bosses who would like work them through it one by one. But the difference between university and the real life is at university, if you get something 80% right, you'll get a high distinction. Your mum will be so proud. <laughs> um, in the real world, you get something 20% wrong, you're likely to get the sack. So it's, you know, it's a different kind of vibe. So working for somebody who it's going to matter if you get it like they're not going to know if you got it 20% wrong, um, lifts your approach. Um, so you might notice, and this is the important thing to describe here, is the OUA guys, this assignment is only worth 15% for you. That is because for OUA, there are, well, for all of you, there are 10 discussion board prompts. The 10 prompts are pretty much the same sort of standard of question as you would get in an exam. I think of eight of them are problems and two of them are critical analysis tasks. The way that it works for both sides is that you answer that problem and once you put up your answer, you can see how other people answered it too. So you get feedback and then I will also give you feedback. In the case of the OUA peeps, they will also get a mark. Part of the reason for that is you guys get to come into the room and talk to each other, the people who I'm talking to now, you who I'm talking to on the recording, it's much harder for you to do that. So this is a way, because I have worked out, that if it's not on the test, sometimes you don't want to do it. Um, so it's a way of trying to make you do it so you talk to each other and you uh, see what's going on. I w the reason it's not for face-to-face -face is if you're all doing it, I would die from the marking. I could tell you how much it pays. It's really crap. So I'm actually, it's a crap shoot here where I throw it out and say, I'm going to do it, and I will give you feedback if you do it, but I also know that most of you won't do it, so I'm fine. But I will tell you that there is a direct correlation, in my experience, between the people who do these things and their exam results. There is definitely a correlation. So if you do it, there is value. So for OUA, there are 10 of them. Your mark is based on your best five marks. So if you do five of them, and it's only 5%, so it actually, there are plenty of people who have done very well in this class who did none, okay? There are plenty of people who did all of them and did okay. There are mostly the people who did really well, did six or seven of them. There five best were their five best, they sort of got the hang of how to do them and, and it helped with their results. Um, this says week two, technically it's week two of contract as opposed to semester week two. Um, I think it's actually really week three that the date is because we don't have a class next week already, you got a holiday, yay! Uh, and instead, because of the public holiday, we will have a Saturday afternoon makeup class later in the semester. I can't remember where it, when it is, but it's in the materials somewhere in Canvas on the calendar. In week 10, you will get a second one of these. You will have already had feedback by that stage on your memo. You will be writing a letter of advice to the client. Well, it will be a draft letter of advice for Dennis to sign. And you will be then supporting that with a memorandum of what research you did, why. Because it might be that your answer is no, you have no case. Do not bother this law firm again. Love and kisses me. Um, that could be your answer, but if it is, you will need to support where you've got to with that. Um, so that, again, quite authentic. Uh, I will release your problem for that at the beginning of the break, um, but it's 
hopefully designed so that you'll have feedback before you do it or it'll, your feedback will be arriving around that time. I've already talked about the OUA only 5% but the rest of you are welcome, encouraged even to do it um, until I start to cry. By the way, I will mark the OUA ones for that first so if I'm running behind, um, I'll be running behind there. Uh, and then sometime in about 14 weeks time or so you will have a two hour open book exam uh, which could cover anything. So, uh, and we'll talk more about that as we get there. Um, when you are doing assignments, please be mindful of the assessment criteria. This is an example of how you find them, this little thing is going, you know, so don't, there's no surprises about what I'm going to be marking you on. Um, so yeah, you can find them in there. By the way, that is actually the first of the discussions, the one that's due at the end of week two, and um, the little video in there is really helpful. Fabian, yeah? Am I going to be marking on a bell curve? That is a very complex question. Uh, the short answer is that the university policy is not to do that. In fact, my next slide will help you with that. This slide says what a high distinction needs to look like, what a distinction credit, etc., looks like. You will find these in what we call, because we like to be as unhelpful as we can, the part B. So you will have heard a lot about, just look at the part B, you know, like, yeah, I didn't know what the part B was. I've been working here for two years. Like, what's the part B? Anyway, <laughs> this comes from the part B. The part B is actually technically, together with the part A, uh, your contract for this subject. It's what basically the terms are of what the university is going to provide. And this is the bit in it that says how we're going to mark you. But as you can see, so we don't mark to a curve. The policy says we can't mark to a curve. But it also says in order to get a high distinction, it needs to be exceptionally clear. Um, and it talks about exceptionally clear in comparison with others. So the end result is that if I don't have a curve, which sometimes happens, I like to think because I'm an exceptionally good teacher and most people end up with credits or distinctions, um, but I have to go in and fight for it because we have to go and look at this and they're like, Ugh. So you will find that in reality, it kind of is a curve and it's based on this. But it's not like we're not going to line you up. It's not like some sort of weird ATAR or anything like that. Does that answer your question? Great. Um, this, before we have a quick break. Um, you will hear, I added this slide a couple of years ago and I use it at the beginning of most of my classes because um, I teach other things in the JD sometimes as well. The thing that students keep telling me is they get over being told, you're doing a master's level degree. We have this, and it's like, what, the, what does that mean, right? What that means is this, that in your undergraduate degree, you are expected to be able to analyse things. Analysis is the thing that you are expected to be able to do. Effectively, if there is an event or a product or even a contract, you're expected to be able to unpick what the various parts of it are. At a master's level, you are, yes, you are expected to be able to do that. You need to be able to do it. But actually, you're expected to be able to demonstrate synthesis. So at a distinction and a high distinction level, that's what we're looking for, is not only are you able to pull apart the individual bits to tell me what the contract is or whether the elements of the contract have been satisfied, we'll talk more about what that means as we go forward after the break, but you're supposed to be able to apply judgment to that, to be able to take those pieces with a view to creating something new. And often it's just those two words are ultimately, again, in my feeble, that's my synthesis of what the real difference is. But that comes up in a lot of your assessment criteria. So it is worth, and you need to start thinking like lawyers now, and lawyers, we love the words. I mean, many of you, I think, probably would have been appalled by a lawyer who talked about a vanilla act just, what, less than a week ago. Uh, and our wrong subject for us to go down that. But I mean, look, that's a lawyer 
in the world taught using language in a particular way that disgusted, quite rightfully, in my view, many, many people. But as a lawyer, I can stand back from that and say, OK, actually, this is a lawyer working in the county court where in the order of 80% of the matters that go to trial involve pedophilia. So in a context where he or she, and well, we know it was a he in this case, so I'm not, I'm, I won't be gender neutral, um, is actually attending trials and seeing a whole range of acts or hearing about them, saying actually on, the, on this scale of heinous, this is, you know, a low credit as opposed to a high distinction. <laughs> Terrible language, I know, but it's precise language intended for a precise audience. Uh, and it, I do not want in any way for this to suggest that that wasn't an unhelpful, hurtful, revolting thing to say. Um, in fact, I just found out today that mine is the face on uh, Justice Connect's um, uh, sexual harassment current campaign. So uh, it would be even worse for me to pick this example. And as I'm saying it out loud, I'm thinking, Catherine, why do you not write down examples in advance so you don't get yourself caught up in these te terrible ones? But as lawyers, this is a large part of what we're doing. We use words precisely. And when we say, when we use one word, we expect it to mean the same thing every time. Uh, and in contract, that will be particularly important. And so part of that is what you're going to be doing here. All right, I am exhausted and definitely need a drink. Can we take, because we did lose some time at the beginning, do you mind if we just take five minutes as a break? Uh, you guys at home, stretch your legs, take five minutes too, and we will return.